is free nose seven abstention. The question is not agreed by a majority of each of two groups of members present. I declare the motion negatived. Debate on motion with no legislative effect. Members, please keep quiet. The motion debate on abolishing the lump sum grant subvention system and the competitive bidding system implemented in the social welfare sector. Members who wish to speak in the motion will please press the request to speak button. I now call upon Mr. Chong Kuo Chi to speak and move the motion. Mr. Chung. President, thank you. President, I move the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. I move this motion to abolish the lump sum grant subvention system and the competitive bidding system implemented in the social welfare sector is uh, my um, determined effort to do something about the situation. Before I became a member, I was um, the uh, chairman of um, a union. I've always been concerned about these LSG's impact um, on the sector. I've been having a lot of um, negotiations with the administration. I staged uh, rallies and strikes. In 2008, the government um, agreed to review the LSG. There are 36 recommendations made in the uh, review report, and the government um, put together the best practice manual. But this only requires the NGOs to conduct self-evaluation. There is no pressure to, to be um, brought to bear on them. If they don't follow the manual, there is no um, punitive mechanism at all. The best practice manual simply cannot address um, the um, practitioners' concerns about recognition of their qualification and their pay, and this is detrimental to the quality of service. The LWB fails to address um, the concerns of the practitioners, and the solutions are not uh, really the answer to the problems. So I am proposing this motion to abolish the LSG and the competitive bidding system. When the LSG was introduced, the government uh, said that the, there would be a greater flexibility in deploying resources to meet social needs. But as a result of the reform, the NGOs enjoy enormous power. They do enjoy more autonomy on, on staffing arrangement. They can design um, the kind of the level of resources that they devote, that they devote um, to their work as long as um, they measure up to the agreement. So there are in the welfare sector um, who are um, who are sack um, the high pay staff and the midpoint salary has become the uh, the, the um, maximum pay point. And there are so many uh, contract staff, and they are uh, getting paid um, unequally for equal work. The high turnover has um, caused a succession gap, and the um, Practitioners are working excessively long hours. The users are concerned about the quality of service. All these uh, would be detrimental to um, the quality of service. The practitioners are very concerned about it. Before 2000, the reimbursement-based subvention system was in place. The administration uh, laid down the staffing um, establish establishment uh, for the NGOs. And their pay packages um, were linked with um, the master pay scale of the civil service. In 1982, after the review in the government sector or the NGOs, um, they enjoy equal pay for equal work. There would be enough for manpower for all kinds of services. And the workers uh, were very committed to their work, and the quality of service could be upheld. But as a result of the introduction of the LSG, the government doesn't 
regulate um, the pay packages and the staffing um, arrangement. And with the introduction of the competitive bidding system, um, the um, the bid uh, would go to the uh, lowest um, bidder, and the NGOs uh, will have to suppress um, the operating costs in order to win the contracts, and they would uh, cut back on the um, payroll in order to to achieve savings. And there is a um, the link of the staff salaries from the um, civil service uh, pay. And they change um, the, the job title in order to remove the comparability with the government. And they claim that um, this would contribute to um, better quality of service. But the NGOs um, slash um, the entry point pay point, and they don't recognize um, their experience. And the entry pay um, remains uh, pretty much the same. There are some source workers who have been changing jobs of men, um, within 10 years, and their pay uh, is still uh, stuck at the entry level. We have we only have the quantitative um, figures, but we, we um, as a matter of fact, um, the as a result of um, the um, the cutback on on the staff, um, the uh, the government is um, outsourcing a lot of um, the services under the LSG. The NGOs um, will have to ensure the quality of service, and they enjoy the flexibility to deploy the resources as they see fit. And this is uh, really something that um, we um, are angry about. The government is introducing um, the um, business operation model. They are merely looking at um, the the um, the. the um, the benchmark, and they don't care about um, the, the the negative consequences. With regard to the competitive bidding system, there were NGOs um, who failed to bid for the elderly services, and they had to um, discontinue with uh, all these services. And elderly people had to be transferred to other um, NGOs. The competitive bidding system has been going on for. So so many years, but no review has uh, been undertaken to ascertain whether the quality of service uh, did indeed uh, impro improved. I commissioned uh, the Baptist University last year to conduct a study. Under this system, the NGOs uh, that um, manage um, to bid uh, for the service will have um, to um, top up. Um, the, the fees, and they have to make up for the um, shortfall in um, expenditure. Those organizations with more resources that would dominate um, the market, small and medium-sized um, NGOs, would find it very difficult to, to take part in this competitive bidding system. And this uh, undermined the um, diversity of the system. The com competition, competitive system, um, has also increased the cutthroat competition, and it is difficult for the NGOs to concentrate on improving the quality of service, and they're seeking more resources from the government to improve the service. The competition would um, affect the quality of service. There are some NGOs um, that try to stop users um, moving to other uh, NGOs, and they uh, stop um, making the referrals. The social workers uh, have to um, meet up, uh, meet up with um, the uh, the requirement, and they have um, to um, bring up um, the the statistics, um, and they have to write proposals and seek funding in order to uh, keep their jobs, and they go to all lengths um, to um, raise uh, revenue for the NGOs, and there are services that are profit making, and many people, however. Uh, have um, been um, crowded out of um, the these services. The social workers are working so hard, and they have um, their their fate their plate uh, full. It is difficult for them to handle the the uh, critical cases. There is so much importance attached to qu qu quantity instead of quality. The social workers' um, wages are suppressed, and they uh, don't have much of a career path.
The contract period uh, would normally last for three to five years, and after the contract period, um, there may not be um, a renewal guaranteed. It is difficult for the NGOs to hire people, and many uh, of an experienced uh, social workers will not be prepared to work for these um, kind of contracts. As a result, um, the well-being of the people is undermined. With the introduction of the LSG and the uh, competitive bidding system, um, the practitioners um, do have a lot of negative sentiments, which which are not easily understood. According to uh, the SWD, the reserves of the NGOs are getting higher. There are some Zaventa organizations um, that that have a lot of reserves. Um, in 2001, 73,06,139. In 2012, the number stands at 141. And the reserves that they have built up uh, are really staggering. In 2001, um, $200 million. 2005, uh, $1.8 billion. 2010, it's gone up to $2.5 billion. And this year is estimated to be a $2.6 billion. O seven O eight, and the government introduced a system uh, where um, the reserve should not be uh, more than twenty five percent of the operating expenditure, and the NGOs are sitting on enormous reserves, and the excess uh, portion will have to be returned to the government. But given the um, greater and greater reserves and. This, this situation is very serious. In 2012, there were seven NGOs um, that um, ex have their reserves exceeding 40%. In 2013, 32 such organizations have the reserves taking a 45% of um, their allocated funding. Today, with this chart, we get to see that of the 141 NGOs that have reserves, uh, 77 of them have exceeded 25%. So we can see that um, the accumulation of the reserves uh, has become um, a common place. Where did they get the money from? It is difficult to raise the revenue, so they have um, they they can only. Uh, uh, cut back on the savings. They they achieve a cutback um, by um, cutting back on the staff and recruiting less staff. There are some uh, workers who get paid lower than the entry point. What is uh, most ridiculous is that um, they they're building up the reserves. They don't they don't want to hand them back to the government. They have to find ways to spend them. In February this year, before the end of the financial year, there was. Um, an NGO that um, um, pay 1.7 months of um, pay in addition to $8,000 um, extra pay. And that's how they, they spend excess um, reserves. Why is it that um, they, they do not spend the money on um, a better pay package for the staff, or they can hire 100 or so more staff um, to, to reduce the workload? And that certainly will enhance the quality of service. In terms of retirement, before 2000, uh, the, the um, MPF um, was paid into by the government um, in quarters 5, 10, and 15 percent. There was a progressive um, scale to encourage more people to stay on in their trade. And this is a kind of uh, retirement protection. After 2000, uh, the government adopted 6.8% as the average uh, percentage across the board. In fact, the NGOs would find it very difficult to um, maintain the system before 2000, and they only had the MPF contribution. In some NGOs, um, they have the snapshot snap staff, and the uh, staff uh, had to uh, re uh, re-enter into a contract, and their retirement protection has been slashed. It is a virtue to um, spend money wisely, but this system is supposed to be people-oriented. 
and this um, new system has run counter um, to the intention of the system. There are some NGOs um, that are concerned about uh, any cutback of uh, resources from the government, and they have to make savings. I don't think I can subscribe to this idea. It is the government's responsibility to look after the, the well-being of the people. The government has some t um, $200 billion in reserve, and the government doesn't have um, to um, do anything at the, at the expense of the workers and the members of the public. The government doesn't have um, to um, I mean, it may have the best of intention, but I'm not sure whether this is um, really a bad thing um, with the best of intention. And the government is being unscrupulous um, to the uh, NGOs and the um, and the clients. The social workers simply cannot concentrate on their work. I now propose the question to you that is the motion moved by Mr. Zhang B. Past. Um, two members have moved amendments. We are now going to have a joint debate, and I will call upon Mr. Yip Kin Yun and Mr. Liang Chi Cheng um, to speak, but at this stage they may not move their amendments. Mr. Yip Kin Yun. I support um, Mr. Zhang's motion, and on that basis, I would like to move an amendment. Um, I am in support of abolishing the lump sum grant uh, subvention system, and I'm against the idea of having it extended to kindergartens. Uh, recently, we have um, got the report on free kindergarten education uh, released. Um, we are, of course, strongly dissatisfied by the kindergartens. I think it is a report that shows no respect for the teachers and principals of kindergartens. The committee spent two years to come up with the report, and yet the subvention to be given to the kindergartens will be done in a way that is not good. Um, for 15 years, um, we have got a lot of uh, disadvantages uh, emerging. In other words, the disadvantages of the LSG found in the welfare sector will now uh, be seen on the kindergartens. Well, I think it is LSG, lump sum grant, in the year 2000 in order to have flexible deployment of resources instead of having a reimbursement-based subvention system, the government migrated to the lump sum grant system. And so the pay of the welfare sector has to follow the market forces. Well, usually um, salary accounts for a large portion of the expenditure. So operators have to cut salaries. In the short term, it may work, but in the long term, in the long term, it is at the expense of quality of service. Many experienced welfare workers uh, did not get paid the commensurates with their experience. Some are even fired. This is because their pay can be used to recruit um, more staff members. This is unhealthy in terms of manpower resources. It also destroys the team spirit. The welfare sector has suffered for more than a decade. On what basis should this be applied to the education sector? The kindergarten sector is worried that we are repeating the disaster in the welfare sector. School uh, kindergarten principals and teachers will be much affected by the lump sum grant system. Uh, in the past, we used to have a salary scale, but then uh, we have had the prime uh, pre. Uh, we we have had the um, voucher scheme for kindergarten education, and as a result, this was distorted. And with this committee uh, report, it shows that the government is not going to improve upon it. 
the salary scale that we're expecting is still missing, and the salary uh, levels will still be subject to market pauses. At most, there will be a salary range. In other words, we are getting the maximum as well as the minimum, and then the median wage or median salary point will be adopted to calculate the amount of subvention entitled. This is a far cry from what we have been expecting. For the median figure, I think ultimately it will become the maximum pay point for kindergarten teachers. I'm not a scaremonger. This is because the welfare sector has shown us what is likely to happen to us um, in the year 2014. There was a report on the salary structures of NGOs. Now, social workers um, have their maximum pay point set at the midpoint um, salary uh, of the degree holders. It has been found that we have got more and more um, middle managers, but then they don't get a pay rise. Their workload is increasing. They don't get a pay rise, and in other words, it means that it is a pay cut. Um, it means that there won't be any quality service. It is said that kindergarten teachers should be paid between eighteen thousand and thirty-two thousand dollars a month. On the face of it, it is very attractive, but then with lump sum grant. $18,000 will soon become the minimum wage. When you go to another kindergarten, you don't get recognized for your experience. So $18,000 would be the entry pay, and even if you have accumulated years of service, you still get paid 18000 only. This is because teachers don't have a salary scale. There will only be a very flexible range. And by this flexibility, it means that you move downwards rather than upwards. For more experienced kindergarten teachers, for the year 2014-15, the median wage was uh, $18,535. And then the average um, years of service is 13 and a half years. Many kindergarten teachers are qualified teachers, and in the past, they were able to reach point eighteen of the civil service pay scale, uh, which will translate into thirty thousand dollars a month. But then we know that many kindergartens, um, many many kindergarten teachers are not paid um, for the degree qualification that they are holding. Some are even master degree holders, and yet they don't get paid accordingly. We have got primary school teachers who have got 12 to 13 years of service. They are not degree holders, and yet they are getting $42,000. So doubling the amount of pay received by kindergarten teachers. And so even if we have got two persons both having studied for a degree course and have clocked up a similar number of years of service, they will get different pay packages. And in fact, we have got 40% of the teachers in kindergartens who have got a degree. Many of them are also um, dipping into their own pockets to study for a degree program. So we are expecting to see more and more kindergarten teachers possessing a degree. And soon we'll see half of them are being degree holders. But then the pay to be given to them cannot reflect um, this um, quality. And it shows that the government doesn't really attach sufficient importance to kindergarten education, and they do not respect the kindergarten teachers. For the social welfare sector, uh, welfare organizations are generally speaking larger in scale. Kindergartens will be of a much smaller scale. 
with lump sum grant, it means that we cannot really try to average out by having the midpoint salary arrangements. Um, it is expected that there can be the averaging out effect. And I think the kindergartens are re really small in terms of the scale. But then we need to attract high caliber staff members so as to um, have quality assurance. We need to be able to attract them to join the profession and we need to be able to retain them. So we have to work on their pay levels as well as their uh, job uh, prospects. I've been told that for kindergartens which have been in operation for a long time, many teachers are very experienced and they're able to um, pass on their knowledge to um, younger teachers. However, if we resort to LSG, it will be very difficult for us to make sure that we have got a good teaching force. Therefore, I have to emphasize that <clears throat> we must have a pay scale that can reflect on the qualifications as well as the years of service, and it should be binding. I support the welfare sector, and I hope that they don't need to suffer anymore, and we certainly would say no to LSG in relation to the kindergarten sector. Thank you. Mr. Leng Chi Cheng. <laughs> The lump sum grant system was introduced in 2001. The welfare sector has always been very concerned about it. This um, has transformed um, really everything in the sector. This has also uh, touched on the sensi sensitive issue of um, pay packages. The LSG system has been going on for 15 years. So we have seen um, a lot of, um, we have heard a lot of um, um, negative sentiments. There are tw 2,700 uh, subventive organizations, and the welfare, social welfare department um, cannot allow too many changes on the part of these organizations. and. Many criticisms are leveled at the uh, system uh, for being inflexible and bureaucratic, and this is uh, taking a lot of um, resources. The government um, tried to enhance um, the services and, and try to uh, cut back on the resources. The beauty of um, the LSG is that um, the corporate governance of um, these adventure organizations has uh, become better. They enjoy more autonomy. They, they can deploy their resources more flexibly in the light of um, the manpower needs. For those users with uh, special needs, the LSG uh, can meet um, the needs in a more innovative manner. Like, for instance, an NGO that runs um, a preschool um, institution. Under the LSG, the Savento organization doesn't have to surrender the re uh, reserves. And the reserves can be used in a more flexible manner. And they can also extend um, the child care services, and this is um, popular with uh, many parents. These um, changes uh, rectify the inflexible and complicated um, and bureaucratic and also fight a system in the past. The Soviet organizations can provide the services um, more in keeping with um, the community needs. We believe that the government should um, make changes uh, in order to uh, meet the diverse needs of the community. What is regrettable 
is that uh, maybe the government um, proceeded uh, too hastily uh, without uh, thorough consideration. Or after the introduction of the LSG, the government uh, merely uh, tinkered around the edges. And there has been delays uh, regarding retirement protection for eight years. There have been three uh, rounds of uh, remedial measures in 2008. Under the pressure of um, the welfare sector, the government set up um, the Independent Review Committee of um, LSG to conduct a comprehensive review. We noticed that the frontline social workers um, are bearing the brunt. Their pay, uh, the pay structure, their, the hierarchy are always in, in chaos. And because of the flexibility of um, staff deployment, many people are working for the same job um, with an equal pay. The frontline staff um, are demoralized and they're under tremendous pressure. And as a result, um, there, there is a high turnover of social workers, and this is undermining the continuity and quality of service. We believe that if um, we roll back the LSG and reinstate the old system, uh, then uh, we will be obliterating the hard work um, of so many people over the years. And this is um, also uh, against the original intention of uh, reforming the um, bureaucratic and inflexible system. So the way to go is um, to optimize, to enhance the existing system. This is more in line with um, the current situation. The government should enhance the LSG system and rectify the problems um, in the following two ways. First, um, the government uh, should um, implement the best practice manual. This was put together um, after the assessment of the IRC and it was put together in accordance with um, accountability and manpower requirements and so on. There was some um, thorough discussion before it was put together. It is um, it enjoys um, a high level of um, acceptability. This manual, uh, however, doesn't enjoy any uh, legal force. It is uh, more like a tooth toothless tiger. In 2014, the civil servants uh, got pay rise because of filibustering here. It wasn't until January this year the f that the funding was approved. The SWD wrote to the NGOs, but Eventually, 40% of the Sofento organizations didn't offer any back pay um, to the staff. Um, Carol Yip, um, Director of Social Welfare, uh, said that conceptually um, this um, should not be regarded as um, pay in arrears because under the system uh, there couldn't be any claims of um, the back pay. So I think the government should um, enhance the implementation of the best practice manual and make it uh, binding on the uh, Savento organizations. The government should reveal the compliance with um, the, the best practice manual on the part of the Savento organizations to make sure that um, public funding would be uh, put to the best possible use. The government should reveal um, the, um, the baseline requirement in terms of allocation of funding and the procedures. The government um, should review um, the funding allocation in accordance with the midpoint salary. And there should be sufficient uh, financial resources on the part of um, the Savento organizations to improve for the pay packages. There ought to be more um, support uh, for the NGOs. We can do without um, complicated remedial measures. We can address um, the pay uh, issues um, that are of concern to the com to the uh, welfare sector in order to help them retain staff. Mr. Deputy, 
Um, the motion also refers to the competitive bidding system. The social welfare uh, system, social welfare department uh, would um, award the contracts um, on, the, on the basis of the competitive bidding system, and the contracts can run for three to five years. Since um, the introduction of this system, the government uh, will not um, directly distribute um, the the contracts, and they have to uh, obtain the contracts uh, through competitive bidding. And this has uh, posed unprecedented um, challenge to the Savant organizations. The professional development and the whole ecology of the welfare sector have um, undergone a quick deal of transformation. The competitive bidding system um, is there to uh, ensure that, that the services will be uh, completed properly. But there are services like home health services, people-oriented services, and they have to build rapport with um, the elderly people. This competitive bidding system is uh, also affecting the stability of the services. I urge the welfare sector to work in conjunction with the administration to enhance the lump sum grants subvention system and also the competitive bidding uh, system. They should uh, remove um, their preconceived ideas and, and all kinds of bias. The uh, DAB is against um, the original motion and Mr. Ips amend the motion. Secretary for Labour and Welfare. Mr. Deputy, I thank Mr. Chang Kwok Chu for moving this um, motion, and I also thank Mr. Ip Kin Yun and Mr. Leung Chi Chang for their amendments. Um, and I have the opportunity to uh, state um, the government's work with regard to the uh, social welfare um, subvention system. The lump sum grant subvention system came into being uh, in January 2001. Out of the 169 subvented NGOs, 164 have um, voluntarily switched to the um, L lump sum grant um, subvention system and, and, and this um, accounts for 99, over 99 percent of the um, subvention given by the SWD to NGOs. Now, um, the social welfare sector used to uh, be discontented with the um, old um, subvention system. The old subvention system uh, required that uh, SWD reimbursed NGOs um, uh, based on the actual costs incurred when providing um, recognized welfare services. And there was very um, stringent control over the budgeting of the organizations. And uh, all the items had to be very carefully scrutinized by the um, SWD. And so um, people criticized the old um, subvention system as inflexible, complex, and bureaucratic. NGOs, as a result, lacked autonomy and flexibility. To to deploy their resources and they were unable to provide um, suitable services in a timely manner based on factors like um, demographic changes, um, changes in family structure, economic um, situations, housing uh, situations, and so on and so forth. And so under the uh, LSG um, system, the Social Welfare Department provides um, a lump sum grant to NGOs. NGOs are given uh, greater autonomy, and they can, um, provided that they uh, ensure um, the uh, um, quality of service and that they can satisfy the requirements and performance standards in the FSAs, flexibly deploy their funding and uh, their manpower resources to provide um, services that are badly needed by society in a timely manner. In January 2008, government appointed the LSG Independent Review Committee to review the um, system and to identify areas for improvement. In December 2008, the IRC um, submitted a report to um, the administration. It was pointed out that uh, it was uh, not appropriate, uh, not practical to reinstate the old system. And the report also says that the principles behind the LSG SS um, are sound, and so the system should be retained and every effort should be made to improve the system. And um, 
36 recommendations were put forward by the uh, IOC on uh, how to enhance the um, management and the um, 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 business in, um, of um, the NGOs um, and also service monitoring and all 36 recommendations have been implemented. Now, uh, out of the 36 recommendations, the first one is that a best practice menu for NGOs on management issues such as human resources policies and level of reserves and their gainful deployment be developed by the welfare sector. The SWD attached great importance to the um, views of the welfare sector in the formulation of the uh, best practice um, menu. And there were uh, many meetings of the uh, sector and uh, the um, uh, menu was launched on the 1st of um, July 2014 and uh, to encourage organizations to enhance transparency and to uh, strengthen the management. And then another recommendation uh, put forward by the IRC was uh, the setting up of a social welfare development fund. In 2009, um, a $1 billion fund was um, set up and um, there are three phases each phase lasting for three years. The first phase um, was completed in 2013. We're now in the second phase, and phase three, three will be um, launched in 2016. Um, the purpose of the fund is to provide uh, funding for uh, NGOs to in, um, improve um, training and professional um, development, to enhance management capabilities, and to carry out service re-engineering. And then let me now talk about competitive bidding. In 2001, the SWD started to um, choose uh, service providers uh, for different types of services on a contract bidding basis. And um, services covered include um, RCHE and also um, um, community and home care services. Um, in fact, this um, and the further purpose is to further implement the um, intention stated in the 1999 budget that there should be open competitive bidding to um, um, select operators for welfare services um, based on um, factors like price and quality. And so um, the concept is to ensure that there uh, is a fair, open and transparent selection process. And um, we attach equal importance to service quality and economic effectiveness. And um, the, uh, this um, is a selection uh, process um, um, based on uh, government um, supplies and procurement regulations, and bidders can more flexibly deploy their resources and increase economic effectiveness. And um, um, service providers can also choose the services that they um, think are suitable um, uh, for the uh, clients. For example, um, uh, music therapy and also acupuncture and Chinese medicine services at contract RCHEs and so on and so forth. Fourth, Mr. Kim Yun's amendment uh, relates to the um, uh, subvention mode for kindergartens. We understand that the Committee on Free Kindergarten Education submitted a report to the Education Bureau on the 28th of May, and there are many recommendations, including the uh, mode of subvention. And it is proposed that there should be a more flexible mode of subvention for kindergartens, and uh, the uh, subvention will be based on the number of students. And um, also, uh, circ special circumstances of um, kindergartens will be also also be taken into account. Um, we, um, the uh, committee understands that um, the kindergarten sector has expressed concerns about the lump sum um, subvention model and also the um, subvention uh, for salaries based on the median uh, wage of staff. And the government will uh, look at um, uh, all these views and uh, will also take into account the kindergarten's concerns. And there will also be uh, suitable policies and concrete measures to um, address the concerns of the uh, sector and the public. And concerning Mr. Leung Chi Cheng's amendment, I want to say that in 2008, um, the administration appointed an uh, independent review committee to uh, review the um, LSGSS. In the past seven years, we uh, have been uh, maintaining uh, continuous liaison and communication with um, the sector. We've, been, we've implemented suitable measures to improve upon the LSGSS um, and the competitive bidding system. And um, the best practice menu um, was uh, launched only a year ago, in other words, in July 2014, thanks to the efforts of uh, various parties. And we um, have to give um, 
the NGO's time to um, operate and implement the uh, BPM and to uh, accumulate experience. We'll continue to monitor the um, implementation of the BPM and we'll take follow up action if necessary. So these are my remarks and I will uh, respond after I've heard members' views. Thank you. Mr. Pun Xiuping, Mr. Deputy. Well, the motion moved by Mr. Chen Kuo Ching. This is about the lump sum grant subvention system implemented in the social welfare sector um, for the first time in year 2001. The government would like to introduce uh, a greater degree of flexibility and give a higher degree of financial autonomy to the social welfare sector. But then for the LSG system, when it was uh, first conceived and so far, it has been implemented amid a lot of uh, controversies. Now, NGOs have been operating many welfare units. And then for the NGOs, their money comes from government subvention. For the NGOs, uh, personal emolument on average accounts for 80% of the expenditure. How the NGOs make use of the government subvention so as to deal with the salary structure, uh, staff establishment, and contractual management will directly affect the turnover and morale of their staff. This will also affect the quality of the subvented service. The LSG has brought about financial flexibility, but has also given rise to many problems. In particular, uh, the salary is not being protected by the system. Um, as a result of the uh, different policies of the service providers, staff members will have different levels of pay. And even for the same organization, uh, there will be different pay levels for similar work, depending on when to get recruited. Sometimes more senior staff members uh, will be dumped so as to spare money for new recruits that can be paid at a lower rate. And this has contributed to a falling standard of the quality of service. In year 2008, there was an independent review committee. But then the recommendations of the independent review committee cannot really address all the problems of the LSG subvention system. Say, for example, equal pay for equal work. The administration, I mean, the report has only talked about the difficulty in comparing the pay of the SWD as well as the pay in the NGOs. And in fact, even within the same organization, different staff members may have different pay rates, but then the report has been silent on this. Moreover, the pay cannot catch up with the inflation because the NGOs may be spending the money supposedly for salary on something else. And in fact, the best purchase menu uh, is not binding. And even though there may be recommendations in the best purchase menu, it has not really been uh, effective. So the system has been in place for many years, and yet we still see a lot of problems. The remuneration of the staff is one of the areas of the greatest concern. Now, welfare service serve um, human beings, whether we're talking about the service providers or the clients or the users, we should be people-oriented. That should be the core value. So I believe that the government should work for the long-term benefit of our welfare sector. The government should reposition the subvention system, and we should balance flexibility and safeguarding the interests of the employees. So I speak. Thank you. Mr. Frankie Yick. Mr. 
deputy for the LSG. Well, I know that it has been a major reform. In the past, the subvention system was on a basis of reimbursement. Later on, to make sure that resources will be maximized, the government, in relation to staff establishment, pay, and also expenditure on individual items. In the past, there used to be a very rigid uh, requirement. So the SWD had to spend a lot of money and time on monitoring and vetting the applications. The NGOs also found themselves busy uh, submitting applications. And in fact, it has dragged the feet of the government, and it has not been responsive to the calls of the society. And uh, it was no in, there was no incentive to encourage the NGOs to seek cost effectiveness. The society is changing all the time, and we have changing needs for social services. In the past, the system was cumbersome; it was rigid, so reform was called for. The government consulted the views of the sector, and in the year 2001, the LSG subvention system was introduced, and then the NGOs were given a greater degree of autonomy when it, com when it comes to staff. They are able to decide on the pay scale. They can decide on matters like uh, staff um, um, pay packages. It has been confirmed as to be working, and in fact, according to the SWD, most NGOs are able to meet the service standards required of them. For the Independent Review Committee on LSG, um, it published a report in 2008, and it recognized the effectiveness of the system. But like all new systems, in the beginning, stakeholders would be um, on the learning curve. All along, the subvention system was based on reimbursement from the SWD, and then all out of a sudden, NGOs enjoyed a large degree of uh, freedom. So many people were at a loss, and sometimes when it comes to financial management, NGOs have been unnecessarily conservative, like cutting the frontline staff numbers or holding back the money which could have been used for pay rise so as to build up the reserves. I think such practices are denting the morale of the frontline staff. In the long term, it will harm the quality of the service. Therefore, the government adopted the recommendation from the IRC that is, best practices have been drawn up and a true real service has been provided. In fact, the SWD and the NGOs have become used to the LSG subvention system. For a certain period of time, the wastage rate has been increasing, but it has come down from the peak in 2006. According to the report of the Joint Committee on Social Welfare Sector Manpower, um, in fact, the waste over rate is 3.7%, much lower than the general wastage rate of 20.1% in the year 2013. The new system has posed as a challenge to the welfare sector, but it seems that um, the problems are gradually being addressed. The LSG system has been in place since 2001. In the year 2008, there was a comprehensive review, but since then, there hasn't been another review. Systems need to be reviewed and adjusted all the time so as to be relevant to the current needs. So we're in support of the call for reviewing the system. But again, I have to warn against um, changing all the time, and we shouldn't uh, give up easily. Thank you. Mr. Lee Chai-Yan. Mr. Deputy, I think that we're setting um, a score with um, Donald Zeng and Carrie Lam because they introduced this uh, lump sum grant system that caused such um, 
a problem with um, bamboo rails, and they are soaring up um, the the, uh, the surface with uh, their conscience. The DAB, uh, Mr. Leung Chi Cheng, uh, said that um, this system is um, equipping um, the surveyor organizations with uh, more flexibility. But the flexibility lies with the organizations, but not so much um, the staff members and the members of the public. Why does the government introduce the LSG? The whole purpose is um, to be mean and to cut back on um, the resources. The pay structure of the welfare sector has um, been undermined. Let's take a graduate, uh, for instance, if he joins the government, the welfare department, um, there is a pay scale, but not so much in the private sector. Some may say that they don't want to work for the government and they will have a hard time in the private sector. If they work for the government, they have um, a stable source of um, pay. Why is the government um, not being flexible themselves. Of course, I don't really want this kind of flexibility. The civil servants, including um, Matthew Jung, they've been enjoying a very stable uh, remuneration system. Why do you hang on to this uh, stability, this stable system exclusively? The workers uh, in the event organizations would like to have uh, the same stability, like Mr. Kenyon said. Um, the kindergarten teachers would like to have um, this stability, and you don't want it. You don't want to allow them. You want flexibility. You may be able to achieve savings, but what do you achieve the savings for? You have sixty or ninety billion dollars in in surplus uh, for for seven for the past seven years. The reserves have built up to uh, more than one hundred. Um, billion dollars, umpteen billions of dollars. Why do you have um, to to um, turn the whole system upside down? Mr. Deputy, if you look at the social welfare sector and, and see what happens, the whole sector has become commercialized. This is um, what the government um, does. They have um, all these uh, voucher schemes, and they have um, the competitive bidding system where the contract would be awarded to the lowest bidders. And they would argue um, otherwise, and they said they, they are looking at quality instead of um, the, the bidding price. But if, if um, a subventive organization can serve just as many people with less resources, then, then it boils down to um, to money. It boils down to the lowest bit. So the entire system is so commercialized, and the subventive organizations are squeezing the workers, make them work more for less pay. Second, I think it is uh, wholly ridiculous. The subventor organizations are becoming like uh, conglomerates. They're looking at the account. They have the lump sum grant. I don't know what the CEOs of these subventor organizations think. They are building up the reserves. Uh, Mr. Peter Jones showed you the chart. There are 77 subventor organizations that have built up reserves um, that are 25% more uh, than the allocation. Previously, you said there, would, there shouldn't be any more than 25%. Now they're accumulating more than 25%, some to the tune of 50%. So what the government is doing? The government is sitting on the backside doing nothing. They've built up so much reserves, but what for? The whole thing is uh, absolutely preposterous. They've um, accumulated so much reserves and don't know what to do with them. That they are becoming like conglomerates. The CEOs um, can fatten themselves 
uh, by、um, getting a lot of bonuses. Now they they do ha- enjoy the the bonuses, one point eight months, hundred two hundred thousand dollars in bonus. So it is only the CEOs of、um, these event organizations、um, who are joyful. But what about those、um, working in the organizations and in the f- social welfare sector? The、uh, workers are, are really doing like、um, casual jobs, and because they are contract staff. And what, what sort of、um, future do you think the the jobs are hold out for them? Many、um, join the welfare sector for their own ideals. But they're they're exploited. Um, they、uh, they don't have any certainty in in their job. It is um the work of the administration. And I don't really understand what you're doing this for. I get a feeling that、um, you are exploiting the social workers. You are not doing、uh, lump sum grant for the teachers. Of course, I will object to that. Um, the the PTU would be objecting to it. And behind the students, and、um, there is some、um, a strong base of parents. But in the welfare sector, the underprivileged、uh, people、uh, don't have as much、uh, support. And the government is commercializing、um, the、uh, the welfare sector, and、um, the the NGOs are becoming more like conglomerates. Ms. Emily, now. Mr. Deputy, I rise to speak in support of Mr. Peter Jones' motion. Mr. Deputy, at the、um, Cambridge、uh, nursing home in Taipo,、uh, we have seen、um, this scandal, and it is against this scandal that we're debating this motion. Mr. Lee Chung Yan、uh, talked about、um, the. Voucher scheme for the RCGs that this has to be postponed. I think this has、um, shown up all manner of problems in this particular sector. Is it like、uh, Mr. Peter Jung said in his motion, Mr. Deputy? This lump sum grant has been going on for a decade or more. Throughout the years, the arguments. And bickering、um, have never ceased. The secretary, in his speech, and said that、um, the reason why this、uh, was brought in、um, was because、um, there was a lack of、uh, flexibility. It sounds as if we're talking about the link read. Maybe there is a reason. We saw the situation then, and we f- we felt、uh, really desperate. So we hoped that、um, something. Should be done to enhance the system. What we are talking about are the subvention organisations. We are not talking about the listed companies or the、um, business organisations. I would have thought that if you、uh, give them the lump sum grant and give them some flexibility and autonomy to improve their services, it would uh, sound uh, really a grand.、Um, Proposition, Mr. Long Chi Chung supported the the system. He cited an example、uh, of a kindergarten because of the flexibility,、um, the operator could extend the working hours, and that certainly would go down well among the parents. But I, I've heard nothing else. If there is so much good about the LSG, why do we hear、uh, so much、um, uproar, Mr. Deputy? If you say that、um, this is、um, A commercialization of the system. Is it the right thing to do in the social welfare sector? In this day and age, in Hong Kong, things uh, have um, become so much more different. You can say that Hong Kong become has become more affluent, but there are so many、uh, who are underprivileged, who are disadvantaged. The secretary might agree with me that.、Um, One million people are mired in poverty, and they're relying on these subvention organisations for assistance. Never did I imagine, Mr. Deputy, 
uh, that um, those um, in charge of the subvention organizations are exploiting um, their own workers and they're putting a lot of money in the reserves. What are they doing this for? Mr. Lee Chai Yan talked about um, the bonus uh, being awarded. If this is the case, then it makes us feel that um, they are putting the cart before the horse. We keep hearing that a lot of social workers are having um, crushing caseloads and they're having a hard time. And we need to ask whether the wastage is really serious. But if they see no prospect in even getting a pay rise and the tendering procedure actually causes uh, service units and service organizations to compete with each other instead of having mutual discussions and uh, share with each other. And uh, has the nature of the whole sector been changed? Are we talking about enhancing the uh, services sector or not? And people are getting more and more dissatisfied. I really hope Secretary could be frank. The problem is you say you're giving these organizations flexibility and autonomy, but why is it that they're exploiting workers? Why are they keeping uh, so much in their reserves? If you if they want employees to work over time, they should be given reasonable compensation so that they could really commit themselves to serving the disadvantaged and the elderly people. If they uh, always have to be concerned about their own prospect, then what can they do? So things should not go on like this because you say it's good. Haven't you heard the vast number of complaints over the years? So like Mr. Yip Ken Yun said, the problem is now spreading to the kindergarten sector. Two or three months ago, the kindergarten representatives actually came to see us um, because there was a rumor that uh, the model would be copied um, and applied to the kindergarten sector. That was the time before Chang Wu Chi's report was released. And then today, we're only talking about social welfare. But tomorrow we may be talking about education. There are so many problems in Hong Kong right now. Mr. President, I hope Secretary would not cause uh, more trouble to our society. We're already having a wide divide uh, in society. People are aggrieved because so many policies are so-called off the ground. They um, don't get in touch with the people. Some ask whether we're bullying social workers. But in fact, the government is bullying a lot of people. So you're actually um, causing the people to rise up to your oppression. So please fix the system and more importantly, fix the uh, problem of Typo Cambridge um, residential care home for the elderly. It, uh, this is bringing shame to Hong Kong. We There are so many loopholes in this system. Secretary, you have uh, much work to do. Mr. Wong Yuk Man, well, it's a pity that we are so few members here. That, well, don't worry, I'm not going to call for a quorum count. I will leave it to long hair. Mr. Deputy, the lump sum grant subvention system is one of the uh, bad policies uh, of the government. It has been uh, preying the social welfare se sector for years. Mr. Chiang Kong Chi has set out the uh, chaos caused by this policy in the original motion. There's no need for me to rehearse the problems. In the 10 years, it has uh, spread to from uh, social welfare to education and uh, medical services, and that's why Mr. Yip Kin Yun has uh, proposed a, an amendment. This policy has caused so many problems. I must level criticism at, at it. Let's uh, look at the history to learn from it. Back then, some political parties here 
supported the lump sum grant. I'm not asking you to commit suicide to be accountable. I just want you to uh, make amends and support Mr. Chiang Kok Chi's uh, original motion. Back in 2001, uh, our economy was in the doldrum. And still, the, the government owned $400 billion of uh, reserve. And it claimed that there would be huge deficits. And therefore, the lump sum grant system, subvention system was uh, introduced. And now, uh, there's a big surplus with the SAR government. Uh, we have a sub fiscal reserve of $800 billion, but uh, the NGO, the recurrent subvention system, has never been uh, fundamentally uh, reviewed. There are only the one-off and uh, transitional relief measures. Uh, it's uh, inflexible, complex, and bureaucratic, and lack of uh, competition. Uh, it's just they are all excuses. The government has to introduce a fiscal discipline. Uh, so social uh, welfare is uh, an area where you can only spend money and cannot uh, get any revenue. Therefore, it's uh, the first one to be hit with this. For example, uh, the uh, uh, LIFA and so on and so forth, uh, we have to wait for 18 months for the policy to be implemented. With uh, Mr. Matthew Zhang in post, uh, well, we have a nightmare. Uh, very often we hear from him hysterical uh, cries, and it's just like uh, doing business. You want to reduce deficit, you want to uh, cut expenditure. And now it's very laughable that uh, the SAR government is doing this. You want to maintain stability, uh, financial stability, and uh, on the other hand, you want to promote welfare. But the SAR government, uh, without hesitation, to opt for the former rather than the late latter. So there are people complaining, no wonder. Uh, today we have uh, people going uh, to different places, and uh, to the uh, June 4th uh, gathering and other places. And I, w I was busy, but I had to come down to uh, criticize you, Mr. Zhang. And uh, in the re there was a three uh, objective in choosing a new system. Because uh, welfare spending accounted for 6.4 percent, you want to uh, increase uh, accountability and efficiency. Uh, instead of uh, uh, plowing more resources, you attach importance to performance uh, monitoring, so that uh, there will be a, a continuous uh, supply of uh, funding to support the ever increasing demand in social welfare, and also through re-engineering. Uh, uh, you make sure that uh, the service uh, will be uh, cost effective. All these are the e about economics and uh, management, but, but we're talking about social management, social affairs. We have to be flexible. We cannot just borrow the terms from management, science, and uh, eco economics uh, without any uh, adaptation. If you want to talk about cost effectiveness or value for money, then you should be fired, Secretary. The, the government is not a private enterprise. Uh, it's supposed to uh, discharge functions that cannot be discharged by private enterprises. It should uh, make up the sh shortfall and uh, whatever is required and not provided. It should be a balancing force. You should not look at costs, and also you should not look at market values. Uh, all these are righteous ideas. Uh, it's uh, music to the righteous government. An American academic uh, Saunders uh, talk about uh, wrote a book on justice: what money can buy, can't buy. And another book on uh, also on justice. Uh, they were very popular. I don't know whether of government officials have read the two books. If you have, uh, you won't be doing such uh, bad things. Market values have, have uh, expanded to erode social values. Uh, the go government talk about efficiency in social services, and now in the social sector you have this competitive bidding system. This is against social justice. Moreover, the, the, the vulnerables are economically uh, disadvantaged. They have weak spending powers. The government uh, only to look at market forces uh, and free economy for the RCHE and also the 
you have a time limited contracts for home services and residential services. Uh, the Cambridge incident uh, is a uh, is so the alarming. Well, you are an accomplice in this uh, in this uh, wrongdoing. The government is will come up with a best practice and also to inject one billion dollars to support the uh, social sector. The government has. Ha had no worry about uh, when it, the NGOs had no worries with in the previous uh, system, and now this is draconian. This is a bad system. With this remark, I support Mr. Chiang Kok Chi's original motion, Mr. Liang Kok Hong. Uh, I want to get to the bottom of the matter. I I remember Dr. Lo Chi Kong now. Once a uh, uh, a prodigy, a very smart prodigy. He he's a member. Of the uh, Democratic Party, what is trying to c copy is uh, to uh, replicate the uh, Lam Sum Grant's subvention. It's like uh, the proverbial uh, search for a sword by carving a mark on a moving boat. So you want to, you take a snapshot and then a, you, an agreement will be granted and based on that snapshot background and uh, you give uh, the NGO a, a, a lump sum. The question is, you are in the business of providing service to people, and uh, people's circumstances can change and uh, they can they they would need more needs sometimes. Uh, this is economics. Uh, economics is about distribution, effective distribution of resources, not about going after profit. So I have this question for the, the secretary. At that time, the the financial sur fiscal surplus was four hundred billion. Now it's eight hundred billion now. And I remember Dr. E. K. Yo, who stepped down during the SARS epidemic. He severely uh, scolded legal members. Well, at that time, before the reshuffle, he was responsible for welfare. He asked, uh, does the money grow on trees? Uh, now, yes, it seems that money uh, grows on trees. Over the period of 10 years, the uh, reserve has doubled. And still, you don't want to carry out any reform. You want to find a sort of with reference to the mark on on the moving boat. Well, you might as well do more. Now that you have the one the lump sum grant subvention, you can take it to the extreme. Uh, C. C. H. Tung was elected by four hundred four hundred member election committee. Uh, his family business uh, was at the, in the brink of uh, bankruptcy. He heard that uh, money uh, would be uh, short, and then uh, Dr. Lo Chi Kong should uh, commit suicide over this uh, policy. He thought he 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 was a prodigy. You wanted to cut. Public expenditure, and also pay in the public sector to tie in with the uh, policy. Since 1998, you you wanted to save the market after the fin Asian financial crisis. You don't want to save the people, so the ship is about to sink. Well, the goods are so important. Let's uh, throw the people overboard. That's the policy of saving the market and not the people. You cut CSSA, you cut civil service pay, you step up outsourcing. Uh, ever see affecting all employees to this day. Uh, before the Sish Tong was CE, before Anthony Leung was uh, FS, no one dared to say this. And uh, at that time, at that point, 
uh, they said uh, we should throw all people overboard. We would save the market, not the people. Uh, I uh, was in prison for three times because of this. I uh, I point pointed my fingers at, at them and uh, said they 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 were wrong. They they want you want to turn the snapshot into a picture forever and ever. As uh, we become more and more civilized, we want to adopt more humanitarian measures in the welfare field. And as I've said, if we want to turn welfare into a right, into rights, rights, well, it's a, a sign of social progress. It's just like free and universal education. So we want to achieve higher ideals. And you said um, we would not spend m more money on that. So you just want to show that you are doing something. Yes, you sprinkle a little bit of money here and then uh, and a little bit there. It's just like a bad husband uh, without giving money, more money to the, his wife. He te tells his wife that the children are growing, uh, are growing. Uh, they need more nutrition. You want to increase the number of uh, dishes. More food should be provided. But uh, he will not give his wife more money. So you are you are you are you are restricted to what you have been given. And the government is doing similar things. Well, you are doing this to your clients. Well, if they are voters, they are your clients. Well, you regard uh, helping them as uh, giving handouts. The fiscal reserve has been has doubled, and uh, every year when I filibuster, uh, we are not seeing the welfare spending doubled. To be more specific. As a share of GT, GDP, we are not uh, devoting or even reserving money for this. So we are just uh, throwing people overboard. We save the market, not the people. What, can, what more can I say, Mr. Deputy? If we have uh, appointed people. Selecting our CE. That's why I oppose to the current uh, constitutional reform package. Dr. K. K. Kwok, thank you, Mr. Deputy. The lump sum grant was launched in 2001. That was the um, heaviest blow. At that time, the director of social welfare was the CS4A, Carrie Lam. She adopted this approach. So that the institution, uh, which is to help other people, has become an institution which has to save itself. They are the social workers. The lump sum grant has something uh, inherited into this, and that is they use the median wage. However, the number, or whatever the number of your employees are, you are just given the median wage. And there is also something inherited in this, or inherent in this, and that is um, after lump sum grants, the funding will not be reduced. Yet the administration went back on his words. Um, on the uh, pretext of inadequate um, f money, the administration cut funding by 9%. Many social welfare agencies have transformed themselves for survival. Recently, I received uh, name cards from those in charge of welfare agencies, social welfare agencies, and that was an eye-opening experience in the past. Social welfare agencies have the employees call themselves uh, chief officers, officers. They are doing they, their name. They are serving the. Clients. Now they have executive directors, superintendents, directors, and suddenly 
you um, consider them um, business uh, business or uh, businesses. Now there is the um, neighborhood um, uh, the guidance uh, or counseling uh, association. The director uh, treats the um, social service institution as a business. Frontline staff um, are given low wages. And, uh, therefore, the uh, organization has made a lot of money. And he, as a uh, um, director, he gave himself to a, a bonus of $200,000. Um, no reason has been given. The government has given this organization a lump sum grant. The frontline staff members who uh, departed earlier than the 1st of April, funding um, was um, given uh, if the uh, staff was uh, left earlier, then um, the uh, money would not be given uh, to the, um, the the bonus was not given to the staff because the staff has left early. And that's really unfair. Now, the funding for a welfare agency is not used to serve their clients. It is used um, as bonus. Such an outrageous thing can happen in social welfare agencies. Now, the social workers are writing business plans all the time, how they can make use of various means to cook their books and apply for funds. The government has set up many funds. Um, usually, these funds are to uh, subsidize those pro-government groups. If you are um, able to um, if you pander to the government's wishes, then you will get a lot of money. If your organization are not obedient, organize um, the grassroots to protest against government policies, then uh, you will suffer. Um, um, even if uh, the furniture is broken, there is a leaking roof, they cannot get any funding from the um, government. Now, the uh, social workers were called Northern Star in the 1970s, 80s, because they really provide guidance to the disadvantaged. But now, uh, the social workers and social welfare organizations are just looking at the carrots put forward by the administration. The money is there. The carrots are there. They have been. Uh, they have become mellow. They are just promoting, uh, uh, promoting the culture of obedience to the government, and finally, the frontline staff workers and also the clients suffer because of this lump sum grant arrangement. This can become even worse when it comes to RCHEs and services to the elderly. They will save as much as possible so that they can get a contract from the administration. Even government contracts will be operated like the Cambridge uh, homes. They bid the uh, welfare agencies bid for government contracts with the lowest price, and then uh, they get the government's money, and then they exploit the workers. And if they have a surplus, the directors, executive directors, the senior management will share the bonus. Now, if a social worker is experienced, you should recognize experience so that he can do some concrete things to serve the clients. Yet, the social welfare agencies, um, uh, under the lump sum grant arrangement, uh, in order to allow their senior management to share the bonus, they have to cut their service. They do not. They are not concerned. Uh, about improving their service. They are concerned about how to apply for funds provided, uh, established by the government. They are concerned about writing a good report so that they can bid for funds. And they are going to, you are going to extend it to the kindergartens. You will continue to suppress the disadvantaged 
and this is unacceptable. I therefore support Mr. Chong Kok Chu's motion. Does any member wish to speak? Mr. Ellen No. Mr. Um, Deputy, the lump sum grants can be regarded as applying a business model to operate social welfare service. This business model or business approach cannot solve the uh, problem of inadequate service. When the lump sum grant was launched, the then Director of Social Welfare, uh, Mrs. Kerry Lam, um, was in charge was in charge and because of the Cambridge home incident we should uh, recall what was said by the then social uh, director of social welfare now she said to the effect that um, she uh, proposed the introduction of this business approach to the provision of social welfare service now she said that Private sector organizations providing social welfare service can um, harness their creativity and innovation to provide more effective service. And she um, referred to the hotels as RCHGs. She said that the private sector can decide on providing three star, four star, or five star service. This Cambridge home, which claimed to be a six-star RCHE had the incident of stripping the elderly in the open and the elderly had to wait naked for several hours before being bathed. What is the problem? If you regard the those who live in RCHEs as tourists, they can consider what, uh, how much money they have and they can consider whether going to a three star, four star, or five star, or even six star RCHE. And if you are not happy with service, you can quit and go to another hotel. I mean, another RCHE. Look at the past week or so. The elderly living in the RCHE and the family members of the elderly are very anxious to find an alternative home. So her analogy is not appropriate at all. On behalf of the uh, Civic Party, um, we support Mr. Cheung's um, motion. In the year 2001, when, uh, before the lump sum grant, was introduced, uh, the old system had merits. In the old system, welfare services could be developed in a stable manner. The social welfare workers were given similar remuneration as the civil servants. That, is, that was very attractive. And there was a stability in terms of manpower, experienced social workers could be retained. That is favorable to the launching of new services to meet new needs by the welfare agencies. The most controversial issue in management is wage, is the salary uh, or salary or salaries system or remuneration system. And since it is decided by the government, uh, there will be stability and there will be no dispute. And that, has, that is a very important issue. In 1999, the, uh, starting the, uh, from 1999, there was a discussion on the lump sum grant. Now, there was such an idea that the um, frontline uh, workers were paid by the government, paid by public funds, 
the employment of each and every staff would have to be checked by the SWD to make sure the money was well spent. The lump sum grant was to provide flexibility to the welfare agencies so that they could uh, flexibly deploy the funds. Now, with this introduction, then all the merits I mentioned earlier were gone. Those who supported lump sum grant was that it would enhance the flexibility of resources and manpower of the welfare agencies could address the local needs um, or, and the, second, the needs of the circumstances, and it should also promote modernization of welfare agencies and reduce the intervention of SWD into the financial and manpower issues of SWDs and thereby reducing the manpower needs of the SWD. And there are reasons for objecting to a lump sum grant. Now, when salaries are gradually were gradually revised, average uh, wage uh, would increase, and the lump sum grant would not would not be able to um, meet the uh, salary payments. And senior social workers would uh, command a higher wage, and that would increase the cost of the welfare agencies. A reduction of experience uh, that, that will lead to the reduction of experienced workers because they are more costly, and that will reduce the quality of service. They cannot get the best persons to join the scheme. And the SWD has reduced the monitoring on uh, the um, manpower um, of the manpower deployment and policy of the welfare agencies. By practice, all the arguments against lump sum grant have been proven. The provision of welfare service has declined in quality. This is time to review the situation. Ms. Alice Mack. Mr. Deputy, Mr. Peter Chang has moved a motion today on a topic of the welfare services sector's concern, that is uh, to abolish the uh, lump sum grant subvention system and the competitive bidding system. In fact, the whole subvention system has brought a huge impact on the sector. In name, the subvention system is supposed to allow flexible the uh, allocation of resources. However, it has been criticized by the sector for a long time for the f uh, shortcomings. Uh, for example, low pay wages for uh, staff members and uh, high wastage rate, etc., and low morale among staff members. Before the lump sum grant subvention system, um, subsidy was provided on the reimbursement basis, and the different service organizations recruited the staff uh, and allied professionals and uh, nurses, uh, etc., on the basis of their establishment size. Everything was clear, and uh, staff members had equal chance of getting promoted, and their work was recognized. However, the government then decided to uh, have a small government in a big market, and on this principle, they wanted to cut costs, and then, and then they introduced a number of measures, including the lump sum grant subvention system in the social welfare sector, and also to privatize, um, uh, privatize uh, PRH properties by uh, introducing the link REIT. Since then, the uh, manpower base has changed. The uh, staff size of service organizations is based on the services demand and that caused a mismatch between the manpower and services required. As of the four, uh, 1st of April um, 2014, 164 organizations joined the lump sum grant subvention system. On the pay scale, staff members' experience is not packed to uh, the pay scale and their experience is not acknowledged by the sector. And these experienced staff would turn to the, the uh, public sector instead. 
So we should um, um, we shouldn't wonder uh, against this backdrop why the uh, private sector services are not good, and some staff members because of the depact pay scale have um, salaries lower than the starting point salary or the pay scale, and this also caused um, the uh, jobs to be less attractive and more experienced. Workers would turn to the uh, uh, civil service instead. So how can we attract more talents to join the social welfare sector? How can we retain experienced staff in the sector and maintain staff morale? For example, we um, uh, there was a there was a social worker who has joined the sector for five years. The, he uh, or she uh, served different organizations in the past five years. As he gained more experience and as he wanted to start a family um, and uh, buy a, f uh, a flat, no matter how committed he was, in the end, because of the heavy workload and the low salaries, he um, had no alternative but to. Uh, uh, leave the social welfare sector to look for better prospects in other uh, sectors. Although in 2008 the the, uh, the uh, IRC lump sum grant IRC was uh, introduced to set uh, the best practices and guidelines um, on the allocation of resources. However, the recommendations are not um, binding uh, legally uh, on uh, service organisations. Well, for example, I recently received a complaint. Um, this uh, complainant worked as a, a helper, domestic helper, in a service organization. And uh, while she or she was waiting for a pay rise, um, and he or she waited for uh, nine months, um, the this person left. Um, the pay rise hadn't been given because of delay uh, in approving funding uh, um, due to filibustering in the council. According to the uh, best practices in the guidelines, the uh, victim should be able to pursue the back pay. Uh, however, in the end, uh, because the guideline is not legally binding, the organization said that they need to call for a meeting, and even if they had received a letter from the social welfare department, they could not just uh, give the back pay immediately. So this doesn't help workers in the sector. Apart from that, welfare organizations are only um, adhere to the uh, financial management principles. They neglect the uh, um, service uh, aspect. In fact, the uh, the uh, salary should be kept at five percent of the. Uh, um, I mean, the reserve should be kept at five percent of the operational cost. But uh, we see that uh, there is a waste of resources because of the large amount of reserves that they're keeping. We want them to uh, remain vigilant, and in the end, they could not uh, allocate resources properly to uh, help people in the community. As for the competitive uh, bidding system, there are three shortcomings. Lack of transparency in the tender uh, assessment process, no appeal mechanism. The organizations can uh, do not know um, the reasons for their uh, failure, and uh, the tender board's membership list is uh, confidential, and the uh, contract period is uh, short. And uh, there is um, no uh, adjustment mechanism based on inflation rate, and experienced welfare organisations could recruit professionals to um, write uh, to to prepare tender uh, documents. However, we should bear in mind that we're talking about uh, putting uh, um, people first. Ms. Ellis, Matt, your time is up. Does any other member wish to speak? Won't be on you. Dr. Helena Wong. Mr. President, the D Democratic Party supports Mr. Peter Jung's motion. We demand that the government abolish the lump sum grant subvention system and the competitive bidding system immediately. 
and relaunch the uh, re the uh, reimbursement based uh, subvention system. The lump sum grant subvention system for the social welfare sector has been uh, implemented for 14 years. And uh, throughout the 14 years, we have heard voices from the social welfare sector, uh, from uh, frontline staff and supervisory staff in the sector who have questioned strongly um, the uh, merits of the system. Now, Mr. Peter Jones' motion is quite lengthy, and I think uh, by submitting such a lengthy motion, he would uh, like to explain to us why we should support him in abolishing the uh, lump sum grant subvention system. So, um, very succinctly, Mr. Jones, we support you. When the government made the decision 14 years ago, perhaps there was some support um, from people in the sector, but it's been 14 years. And as mentioned in Mr. Cheung's motion, um, there are different problems, low staff morale, uh, lack of prospect, diff same job, different pay, and the difficulty in retaining experienced staff. And uh, what is most important, apart from funding, is uh, manpower, as far as the social welfare sector is concerned. If the social workers cannot even make ends meet, or if they um, believe that um, their salaries have been exploited, it is hard for them to maintain the morale and do the job properly. Although there is the best practice manual formulated by the government, uh, and I think, um, Secretary, this is this manual is introduced after you heard about the um, negative comments on the system from the sector, and the best practice manual uh, stipulates the uh, requirements on the allocation of funds. However, as mentioned by other members, this best practice menu has no binding effect. So, Secretary, have you conducted any survey to see if service organizations are really following the best practice menu? A supervisor in a service organization might originally find, find the lump sum grant uh, system attractive because um, he might thought that uh, funds could be flexibly deployed. Uh, for them to um, do their tasks properly. However, we're seeing more and more um, shortcomings. The supervisors of these organizations tend to be uh, 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 misers because uh, they like to be um, conservative. Um, they like to. Uh, this is uh, just like the Central People's Government's approach to the constitutional reform proposal. In order to prevent the so-called um, uh, radical candidates from uh, joining the race, they uh, pose different obstacles. Now, is this also happening to the social welfare sector? Because they are afraid of overspending, they'd rather be more conservative or too conservative. And in the end, what we see is unreasonable pay, no job prospect, or under staff, so as not to, to uh, overspend uh, the funds. And what is uh, really sad is that the uh, organizations couldn't uh, use up all the funds in the end within the period specified, and uh, the grant uh, is eventually returned to the uh, Labor and Welfare Bureau. And uh, in the FS budget, we can see that uh, not many, not much resources are allocated to social welfare, and yet we see that um, towards the end of the financial period, the funds are returned to the government because they're unspent. And there is also uh, one major problem in the private sector. If you, if well, there is a clear salary scale for the civil serv uh, for the civil servants, and you can rely on the pay scale for uh, increment for the job prospect. However, after implementing the system, many NGOs 
would uh, see their pay is getting deducted. And there are also um, staff on uh, contract terms not being able to get the um, pay rise in retrospect. So we need to ask why is it that for two university graduates undergoing the same training, one would uh, receive a, sal a stable salary and a stable job prospect for working in the civil service, whereas for the other one who is working in a, a service organization in the private sector, the supervisor could uh, set the salaries at their will. Although they would set it at the midpoint of the salary scale, but there are also cases that the salaries of these members, um, the staff members, um, go below the entry pay point. So it's been 14 years since the system is established. I hope the secretary could conduct a comprehensive review to see if we should continue with the lump sum grant subvention system with limited resources on social welfare. Should we allow the unspent funds to return to our, our treasury? We've been discussing these issues for a long time. There is also another point, the competitive bidding system in the original motion. And we had a public hearing uh, at the panel. Um, we listened to the views of the NGOs. Many of these organizations serve elderly people or, the, or people with disabilities. And uh, once every two years, they're required to submit their tender bids again. And it is difficult for them to retain um, manpower because they don't know whether um, their business could sustain after two and three years. I support Mr. Peter Zhang's motion. Dr. Fernando Zhang. President, with regard to this motion debate and the lump sum grant subvention system, but this has a profound impact on me. I'm a social worker. A social worker works to help people, especially the disadvantaged. But this system has made the profession, the entire service sector, uh, degenerated. And we are unable to uphold certain core values, fairness and also the to regard the need of the service recipient as the most important. Because of this distorted system, we cannot uphold the basic core values of social work. As the government puts it, the established uh, practices have been uh, abolished. First, uh, the establishment, the and second, the uh, Pay scale. If you imagine that uh, in our hospitals, if different departments, uh, the work doctors, the frontline staff, the nurses, uh, to receive different pays depending on where you work. If for this hospital, the in the A and E department, they have twenty doctors. In another hospital, there there are only five, and you still allow that. But the uh, but the demand is similar in terms of population figures. Can you imagine what would happen in our community? That's what, how this system works. You break all the rules. You give a lump sum to a uh, service provider. You can utilize the, the uh, allocation any way you like. As for manpower, well, you need to employ social workers. Flexible. It doesn't matter how many social workers you engage. And you can save the money, unspent money. You can save hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, in the past few years, uh, the surplus level was um, two odd billions. So we can uh, give money to NGOs, and if the money is not all spent, they can pocket the surplus. For what purpose? I don't know. In the future, it will be spent on services. How? How can that be? Because when you calculate the uh, subvention, you already make sure that the subvention, the, uh, the, the funding is needed to serve the community. 
and that is uh, if I uh, need to earmark uh, this amount of money to hire doctors, and uh, now the service provider don't doesn't do it, and that saves the money for future service. You cannot do this because there's a long waiting list. And now the system allows uh, the NGOs this flexibility. Yes, it's very flexibility, and they can uh, hoard money. They can save a lot of money. And in the past few years, uh, you know the cap is 25% of MDO subvention, and uh, they are doing more than that. They have exceeded the cap. And therefore, they have to plow back seventy million dollars to the government. What is this? Actually, you have a uh, you have uh, cut the subvention to the bare minimum, and still the uh, NGOs can still save money, and the money will go back to the government if it's not spent. Well, that's not flexibility. It's a uh, Exploiting the uh, disadvantage. There's no establishment. There's no rules to follow. Uh, the uh, staff establishment on one service provider can be very different from another. Uh, the important thing is to uh, crunch the numbers. You have to deliver the numbers of uh, service recipients, and as a result, there is a manpower wastage uh, in my sector. Uh, those providing domestic care and frontline workers are all suffering from a double-digit wastage rate, 20% or even 30%. In one year, you can see uh, a third of the uh, workforce leaving. In one service provider, 200 people reside. How can you maintain the service? How can you know your service uh, clients? Uh, how can you establish a relationship with such a high wastage rate? This is the root of all evils. Morale in the sector is very low. Under the competitive bidding system, everyone uh, keeps their silence. They will not criticize the government unless they won't be awarded the next contract. And of course, you're happy to see that. The civil society, the NGOs, uh, who are, which are well established, and most of them, are, they are not criticize the government. They are afraid of you because you uh, get them by their throat. This is the uh, evil fruit of uh, the lump sum grant subvention system and competitive bidding system. And now, even for the care for the elderly, which is needed on the, in the long term, you want to retender the service contract every few years. What's wrong with you? Our service cannot be established on such a shaky ground. If you think this is a good system, why not ask the SWD to implement it first? You are so uh, rigid and inflexible. Why don't you apply this system to your own department? And now you want the, to apply this to the education uh, sector as well. As a result of the lump sum uh, grant subvention system, those with low pay uh, get lower paid, and then uh, resources for social welfare have been wasted as a result. Mr. Al Pachan, well, the lump sum grant subvention system is a nightmare to social uh, work uh, workers, but it's a tumor to NGO service providers. If you cause nightmare to the uh, workers in a particular sector, how can you expect them to deliver quality service? How can you ensure um, how can you expect them to maintain high uh, level and high quality of uh, performance? If uh, in a particular sector there's a tumor, how can this sector grow and develop uh, healthily? So without removing this tumor, social welfare sector will not see any good days, and there will not be any quality improvement. 
Fifteen years ago, the government proposed the introduction of the lump sum grant subvention system to the social welfare sector. I voiced strong objection. I pointed out in uh, on the uh, 15th of uh, December 2000, uh, I already said in the discussion of the funding application, uh, unlike the reimbursement-based subvention system, individual service providers don't have to be accountable to the public. So we cannot rule out that uh, they will adopt unfair practices in their operations. I remind that everyone in the council that the individual or NGOs uh, would uh, abuse their uh, flexibility in utilizing funding and uh, sacrifice frontline workers, and most resources will be used on improving the, the uh, pay and uh, condition of service of senior people. But that's what I said on the uh, 15th uh, of December. 2000. I asked uh, the, those uh, parties concerned uh, not to support the proposal, but uh, I was uh, just a member of a political party. My, the political party I was uh, I was affiliated to the, did, did not agree. Without their the support, uh, the government wouldn't dare to introduce the, the system. Because if you're familiar with social welfare and social welfare subvention, you know there are different uh, groups, interest groups in the sector. A group of people will uh, control a particular uh, subsector. They support each other. You you get money and I, I get money. You get promotion and I get promotion. Many social welfare organizations are uh, products of uh, in-group in-group decisions. At first, uh, the, the those senior the service providers might have uh, ideals, but uh, very soon they become senior executive, and they don't want to get in the way of uh, allowing uh, money to be made by other people. A representative political party could uh, ignore all these potential problems. We have uh, people. We have people with an IQ of uh, one hundred eighty. I was not that smart. I did not have any experience to speak of. I could not carry out any research. I only looked at it from uh, an ordinary p person's perspective, and I predicted that uh, these problems would 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 arise. And people were so bright and supported this uh, tumor-like uh, system and allow it to grow and poison our community and uh, harm our service clients. We are t I'm talking about single parents, elderly people. And now the, we have uh, our CHEs uh, where Elderly people will be stripped naked in an open uh, place. You allowed, you encourage people to the transfer benefits and to reap benefits uh, under the system. I'm very disappointed. That was what I f uh, found uh, back then. And after 2008, and we, after we have had a number of uh, incidents and complaints, and the government uh, resorted to some piecemeal uh, remedial actions, uh, a review committee was set up, and uh, it said that there were 36 proposals to the improve or, or to re remedy uh, the system, uh, the so-called best practice manual. I was the chairman of the social welfare panel in this council. I invited people to attend uh, a hearing. I said uh, I had no confidence in the 36 recommendations. Uh, and I said uh, these recommendations would uh, 
achieved nothing. And now we have to continue with the discussion. As I said, it was a tumor. The tumor must be removed. It's incurable. You have to take it out. Years ago, I said to some who supported this proposal, I said, since you supported this so much as Dr. Fernando Ajo, why, why don't you implement this to the education sector? The same principles can be applied. You can uh, pay whatever you want uh, for your teachers. Why don't you apply this to your the schools? Well, it, it, the reason was social workers are easy targets uh, f to to bully, and uh, they are at your mercy. So I propose that a social worker should stage massive strikes and uh, get justice. Don't uh, continue to daydream. Mr. Ho, thank you, Mr. President. The lump sum grant is not the only way of providing funding. Before, uh, or rather, around the year 2000, the proposal appeared in three policy areas, and social welfare agencies are one of the three. As for the other two, uh, one was the DSS schools, direct subsidy schools. Funding is provided according to the number of students. A lump sum is given to a school so as to reduce the reimbursement arrangement, to take away the reimbursement arrangement, reduce the need to make reports, and reduce administrative work. Another, which is even more evil, is the CSSA system. When Donald Chang was the FS, uh, all these uh, were launched. It fully represented the rightist thinking, a small government approach which is mean and uncaring. CSSA at that time was, was reviewed. More freedom uh, would be given to the CSSA recipients, so, so to speak. So there is no distinction between a subsidy for consumables, for books, for rent, for food. Everything is lumped together so that the recipients can learn uh, to look after their own uh, finance. When it was launched, uh, for a four-person family, five-person family, some expenditure, uh, could be uh, shared. Uh, uh, therefore, a four-person family, five-person family would receive a smaller subsidy, say, in terms of uh, per, per head. And therefore, the rent, therefore, as a result, a rent a subsidy is not enough, and people have to um, try uh, use some of the money for food to pay rent. There was a review on the lump sum grant. There were 36 recommendations. In the first speech of Mr. Chiang Kok Chu, among, uh, he pointed out that among the 36 recommendations, nothing was said on manpower, nothing was said on remuneration. In a service provider, remuneration uh, or personnel expenses is the biggest sum because social service is a person-to-person -person service. Among the 36 recommendations, not a word was said on personnel expenses. Therefore, Mr. Chiang Kok Chu proposed to cancel one uh, lump sum grant, and that uh, is something we support. The school is the schools are similar. Uh, in order to maintain a small government, it was said that greater flexibility is, get, uh, is given to the schools. The flexibility is similar to NGOs, social welfare agencies. They saved a lot of surpluses. They increased school fees, but they do not give the response. They, they do not honor their due uh, responsibility of providing scholarships. They hide information, and they just give small amount of scholarships. And therefore, DSS schools can invest in property. DSS can invest in tens of millions of dollars of shares, and the surplus is far greater than the normal operation of the school for a year. 
when the uh, Secretary for Education, uh, when Mr. Michael Sheen was the Secretary for Education, he imposed a cap on surplus and he prohibited the schools from investing in high risk uh, investments. Why uh, the social welfare agencies still have the same problem? The social welfare agencies are to provide services to the disadvantaged, and yet they are subject to the constraints, harsh constraints, uh, in terms of manpower uh, and personnel, um, and therefore they are not able to upgrade the service. Uh, Lo Chikong explained, uh, Lam Sam Grant to me, Carrie Lam explained it to me. They said that welfare agencies would have uh, high pay staff, uh, they will uh, leave, and then there will be newcomers. Their median will be median uh, salary will be very stable. I don't know whether the welfare agencies are bad in managing their finance. They are not able to manage uh, their finance by a business model. The first thing they do is to bully their employees. Median wage has become the maximum. Point in the point in the pay scale, they can save a lot of money, but what for? They have forgotten that in uh, their their mission and vision of the welfare agencies, they should support and assist the disadvantaged. Yet they just uh, they they exploit their own workers. They save money so that they can deal with the rainy days. They can um, invest for the future, and therefore they exploit their own. Workers, that is a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're afraid of this. If you can handle it well, it will not happen. But because you've adopted outrageous measures to avoid the hazard, then the hazard happens immediately. You fall into the trap immediately. Mr. President, there's a need to change this. We need to look at it seriously. We need to look at lump sum grants seriously. After implementing lump sum grants for so many years, these welfare agencies are not able to enhance the level of service or the quality of service. On the contrary, because of um, the lack of management skills, social workers become the object of exploitation. As a result, the disadvantage who are supposed to be helped by social workers are not able to get the service uh, that is required. The secretary has to face up to these problems. They have uh, you have to look into the welfare agencies as to how they abuse the system and harm their own employees. Does any member wish to speak? Mr. Tam Yu Chong. Mr. President, with regard to the lump sum grant in the social welfare sector, since the implementation in the year 2000, there has been a, a lot of disputes. It's often heard that uh, wages are suppressed, the wastage rate of contract staff is high, yet the lump sum grant has provided the efficiency and flexibility of the welfare agencies. They can respond to local demand and respond to the circumstances, and they are able to deploy their resources strategically, and many have given recognition to these merits. Um, with regard to Tin Sui Wai, in the past decade or so, we have seen that a social welfare agency a social welfare service development in Tin Shui Wai has been the most rapid. Tin Shui Wai is able to uh, get out of the long shadow of a tragic community. There are a number of supporting services which have been launched very um, uh, responsively. Um, the, um, the, the, there is there is a lot of outreaching service after school care for students. Um, they are targeted at uh, relevant clients, and these are the results of lump sum grant. 
in implementing the lump sum grant, there are a number of problems. Remuneration of staff members is the focus of discussion. In 2008, the administration adopted the recommendations of the Independent Review Committee, introduced 36 measures, yet we still see uh, complaints of social workers. The um, welfare agencies do not use the increase in lump sum grants to adjust salaries. The reserves are too high in um, the adjustment salary uh, salary adjustment mechanism. There is no participation by staff members. The guidelines are not enough, or the best practice guide is not enough. The administration should look at the present mechanism. The administration should consider introducing disciplinary measures to make sure that uh, welfare agencies do comply with the rules and guidelines. With the introduction of the lump sum grant, um, there is the, uh, also the introduction of the competitive bidding for welfare services. And that, uh, that point has been emphasized. Because of the change in fun the mode of funding, the negative es effect of competitive bidding has been exaggerated. Uh, the small agencies have difficulties to survive, and large agencies have advantage in terms of resources. Small agencies, in terms of providing proposals and bidding for services, are at a disadvantage. At a disadvantage. Uh, there are large numbers of uh, agencies bidding for a small number of contracts. This is a waste of resources. The welfare agencies regard other welfare agencies as competitors, and therefore uh, the exchange of experience will become an exchange of business secrets, and therefore such activities uh, will not uh, will, will decline. And there is also um, that, that will also uh, lead to the uh, reduction in referrals. I've handled a case in which an elderly needs uh, the home repair service of another agency, but the social worker who belongs to another agency uh, is not willing to uh, fill in the form uh, on behalf of the elderly, and the social welfare de department has to intervene. In order to uh, reduce cutthroat competition between welfare agencies, the administration should consider uh, the uh, fixed price bidding arrangement for regular service, and there should be a, re um, a change. Uh, that there, there should be a, a longer contract period so that uh, welfare agencies can plan in the long term. And when there is a demand for a certain service in a certain district, and if it is a long-term demand, then the administration should consider increasing the uh, resources for the service provider instead of introducing new service providers. Social welfare service is person-to-person -person service. The human touch is very important, and it should be one of the goals. The um, subsidy arrangement and the bidding arrangement should be upgraded Uh, instead of um, being um, torn down. Whether it's a lump sum grant or whether it is the um, contract bidding, they are being adjusted according uh, to the views of the stakeholders. The problems within the system um, have been uh, dealt with and their approach have been recognized. Uh, such improvements should continue. Thank you. Uh, I support uh, Mr. Leung Chi Chang's amendment. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Peter Chang, you may speak on the two amendments. Thank you, Mr. President. Just now, 14 members spoke on the motion. Two of the members have moved amendments to my original motion. The first member to do so is Mr. Yip Kin Yun. 
his amendments. Relates to the pay for kindergarten teachers. And now, the committee is recommending a midpoint salary for kindergarten teachers. Now, the situation is uh, akin to the social welfare sector. And I talked about the plight of the social welfare sector. And Mr. Ipkin Yun's amendment um, expresses more or less the same uh, issue. Kindergarten education and social welfare are both about putting people first. We should not adopt a mindset of uh, running uh, social welfare services or kindergarten education like commercial business. Um, this is not what we want to see. We don't want kindergarten education to be commercialized. Mr. Ipkin Yun also mentioned the lack of a pay scale in the kindergarten education sector. I think the problem is again akin to that in the social welfare sector. That is to say, even for staff with more than 10 years experience, they may not get um, any pay increment. And this also costs uh, instability in the provision of services. And there is no mechanism to follow um, as far as pay increments are concerned. And um, staff members could only resort to pleasing their bosses. This often happens in uh, some other sectors, but in a professional sector, allowing bootlicking would undermine the quality of of service in the sector. And uh, this would also induce indirect competition among organizations. This could be vicious competition, undermining the cooperation of uh, or among team members. In the end, affecting the quality of service in the kindergarten education sector, the social welfare sector. So I understand why Mr. Ipkin Yun has moved this amendment to my motion and they just and he just want to uh, show that uh, the two sectors are facing the same problem. Mr. Lon Chi Chung has also moved an amendment and he seeks to explain that after the IRC set up in 2008, problems remain uh, despite the first review and that another review is necessary. But I think there is an inherent problem with the lump sum grant subvention system that cannot be resolved by reviews. For small to medium-sized organizations, it's hard for them to balance the books. If we look at the whole sector, there are 160 plus organizations uh, with um, 10 billion, um, 10 billions worth of funds. In fact, if the midpoint salary is adopted, then it may not exceed uh, the maximum amount. That means the government may not need to disperse $10 billion for these 100 plus organizations. But I think, in fact, they could be distributed in a manner that could um, balance uh, all the organizations, and they could also keep a reserve of twenty-five of up to twenty-five percent of the costs. And I think this is already an inherent problem that cannot be resolved by revamping the system or making any changes, unless. We're talking about abolishing the system altogether. So we don't agree uh, with Mr. Lan Chi Chow, Secretary for Labor and Welfare. President, I'd like to thank Mr. Chen Kuo for moving to today's motion, and I thank uh, Mr. Yip Kin and Mr. Lan Chi Chow for moving the amendments. 
I've listened carefully to the 14 members who have spoken. Let me respond to them uh, after the introduction of the uh, lump sum grant subvention system to NGOs. Uh, has been given flexibility to reorganize their work so that they can streamline their work procedures and uh, reprioritize their service uh, targets. They will be more flexible in uh, de redeploying their resources, and it's also good for the introduction of new ideas, leading to uh, quality improvement. Actually, uh, in the reports uh, published by the uh, Lump Sum Grant Individual Independent Review Committee, uh, some instances have been quoted uh, saying that uh, the NGOs has been able to use the flexibility granted by the system. For example, that they would adopt flexible hours to to suit the needs of service clients, and they can uh, introduce IT pharma pharmacists and uh, dietitians to offer different uh, services, and also they can reorganize their manpower so as to ensure that they can move ahead with the times. The Lump Sum Grant Independent Review Committee uh, actually asserted that the uh, principles underpinning the system are correct, therefore it should be retained. The report also proposed 36 recommendations to improve the system. We have uh, implemented all of them. We note that the sector uh, is now working towards uh, the uh, transparency of uh, corporate uh, governance, uh, public accountability, and also to enhance communication between their staff and service users as well as uh, making improvements to the the uh, service conditions of their staff. Therefore, reintroducing the old system, and that is uh, ab abolishing the present one and going and going back to the old system, is not appropriate and it's not practicable either. Uh, the best practice menu uh, was implemented uh, on the 1st of July 2014. It was the result of uh, efforts of uh, SWD and uh, stakeholders in the sector. It's uh, one of the fruits of uh, the uh, review and um, improvement measures. Under the uh, best practice menu, uh, in the first, after three years, the uh, NGO will have to review its policies to comply with the menu, uh, with the guidelines. Uh, according to the SWDs, uh, NGOs uh, are now reviewing their surplus reserve level and also the reserve for uh, M MPF um, contributions. They are trying to enhance the transparency, and uh, they have reviewed uh, the uh, the pay and terms of conditions of their staff and the uh, contribution rates of uh, their MPF, and they are also enhancing the, the functions of uh, their boards uh, so as to enhance communication and be more accountable. In 2000 and 2001, uh, the expenditure on subventing NGOs was uh, $6.4 billion. In 2015 2016, it's $13.04 billion. Uh, it, it, it represents an increase of 103.4% over the, the period. We have uh, uh, increased the funding for many NGOs, uh, including $4.4 billion uh, as a one-off grant to the pay for transitional uh, subsidies uh, to enhance essential uh, administrative capa cap uh, cap capacity, uh, hiring of uh, allied uh, healthcare professionals and other services, and also the uh, SWD has uh, provided uh, non-recurrent Funding to NGOs. For example, in 2008 2009, $200 billion were provided to enhance administrative capacity. And uh, last year, 2014 2015, uh, there was a grant of $470 million. Since 2009, uh, when we set up the, 10, the $1 billion development fund, uh, so far, $539 million have been granted to 159 NGOs. And so far, 200,000 staff members of these NGOs have been trained. And uh, we have uh, up upgraded the 500 business systems, and uh, 235 uh, service studies have been uh, completed. With regard to the competitive, bid competitive bidding system, since 2001, uh, the SWD has introduced uh, the tendering system for newly, uh, newly, newly built uh, LCHEs. And we have uh, provided 20 contracts to 26 uh, uh, commissions, LCHE. The surf, uh, service contract will usually last for five years. If uh, their performance uh, 
is uh, satisfactory and usually after the expiry of the first contract the, it will be renewed for another five years so as to provide a stable working environment so that uh, the service provider can um, make pop-up planning for services and manpower deployment. As for the um, enhanced uh, home and community care service, under the arrangement we can allow service providers to provide flexible service and will allow more service providers as long as they uh, comply with the relevant quality requirements they would be able to participate in the provision of the, the service. We hope that the we know that the uh, social welfare sector would like to cover this under the uh, lump sum grant system instead of uh, doing it through contracts. This is a fundamental change. We are now uh, uh, exploring the feasibilities carefully. As for Mr. Yip Kin Yun's uh, amendment, which uh, mentions the uh, subvention uh, mode for free subsidized uh, kindergartens, I'll refer the, his views to the Education uh, Bureau. The, the Education Bureau is now uh, listening to public views so as to come up with suitable policies and measures. Mr. Chung Kok Chi mentioned in his speech that uh, he is concerned about the uh, reserve level of uh, NGOs. According to the best practice manual launched in uh, July 2014, it provides a, a optimal level for reserve for NGO, and that there's our requirements on uh, making public the uh, reserve level so as to enhance public accountability, transparency, and the confidence. And the boards of these NGOs should at least once a year discuss how to make the best use of the reserve they have, and also to disclose to the public uh, what they have, what they did in the previous year on uh, on the on utilizing the reserve. The SWD will continue to review how NGOs make use of their sur surplus and or reserve under the lump sum grant subvention system. Some members have mentioned the RCHE in Taipo. I have to clarify that uh, this particular RCHE is a private uh, institution. It has got nothing to do with the lump sum uh, grant subvention system. The SWD has not per bought any place from the RCHE, so we should not mix up uh, the, the uh, situation there with uh, our discussion. We'll continue to listen to the stakeholders, Mr. President. Mr. Ip Kin Yun is not here in the chamber. This council will not um, proceed with uh, Mr. Ip Kin Yun's amendment. Mr. Long Chi Chang, you may now move your amendment. Mr. President, I move that Mr. Chang Wo Chi's motion be amended. I now propose a question to you, and that is that the amendment moved by Mr. Long Chi Chang to Mr. Chang Wo Chi's motion be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise your hands. Mr. Chen Kwok Chi claims a division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
。現在進行表決嘅係梁志。We're voting on Mr. Lang Chi Chang's amendment to Mr. Chang Kwok Chi's motion. 開始表 ，voting begins。Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. Results are displayed. From functional constituencies, 20 present, 13 for, 5 against, no,、uh, 2 abstentions. From geographical constituencies, 23 present, 8 for, 12 against, 2 abstain. The question is not agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negative. Mr. Andrew Lang. Mr. President. I move that in the event of further division being claimed in respect of、um, the motion on abolishing the LSG subvention system and competitive bidding system implemented in the social welfare sector, the council shall proceed forth with the division after the bell has been rung for one minute. And I put the question to you, and that is Mr. Andrew Leung's motion be passed. Does any member wish to speak? I now put the question to you as stated. With those in favour, please raise your hands. Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two. Groups of members present. I declare the motion passed. I order that in the event of a further division being claimed、uh, um, in respect of the、uh, motion on abolishing the LSG subvention system and competitive bidding system implemented in the social welfare sector, the council shall proceed forthwith to the division after the bell has been rung for one minute. As Mr. P-、uh, as Mr. Peter Chiang has used up his time to speak, I will not ask him to reply. I now put the question to you, and that is that the motion move, moved by Mr. Chiang Pok Chi be passed. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. Mr. Chen Kuok Chi claims the division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Please press the button again. Please check your votes. Assembly Lao, any questions? If there are no questions, voting is closed. Results are displayed. From functional constituencies, 20 present, 7 for, 13 against, no abstention. From geographical constituencies, 23 present, 14 for, 8 against, no abstention. The question is not agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion negatived. Two requests made under Section 7, let's go, pass, and privilege order.